For many years now, British news reporting has been swept up in a current of anti-British and anti-white sentiment. For example, violent incidents or murders in which the victim is an ethnic minority and the perpetrator is white are given maximum media coverage and usually with an assumption that the attack was driven by racism. Whereas other violent incidents involving white victims and non-white perpetrators are given minimal coverage. Another example is the coverage of demonstrations by the English Defence League against religious extremism, in which several media institutions attempted to spin the issue to give the impression that there is a Nazi-style uprising occurring across Britain. Now it's easy to pass off anti-British and anti-white news reporting as overcompensation for historical guilt over the slave trades, but at the National Union of Journalists we find a different story. The National Union of Journalists, or NUJ, sets ethical guidelines for its media industry members. The organisation is linked to many other powerful media organisations, including the European Federation of Journalists and the International Federation of Journalists. The NUJ document I'd like to bring your attention to is called the Guidelines on Race Reporting. The purpose of the guidelines is supposedly to tackle racism in the British media. But the document itself is written by a group within the National Union of Journalists called the Black Members Council. And the document explains that black can cover people of Arab, Asian, Chinese and African origin. Yes, that's right, the Black Members Council, a group that forbids white membership, has been given authority to tell British journalists and editors how to tackle racism. How ironic that the British media has made an endless fuss over the white-only membership policies of the BMP, yet it doesn't speak out against the Black Members' Council at the National Union of Journalists. The discriminatory nature of the Black Members' Council is evident in the persistently anti-white content of their guidelines on race reporting. Here are some examples. Only mention someone's race if it is strictly relevant. Check to make sure you have it right. Would you mention race if the person was white? Note the assumption here that only non-white people can be victims of racist reporting. That in itself is a racist opinion. Investigate the treatments of black people in education, health, employment and housing. Do not forget travellers and gypsies. Cover their lives and concerns. Again, the writers assume that only non-white people can be mistreated in these areas. Press for equal opportunities for employment of black staff. The assumption being that equal opportunities need not apply to white people. Immigrant is often used as a term of abuse. Do not use it unless the person really is an immigrant. Most black people in Britain were born here and most immigrants are white. Notice the assumption here that criticism of immigrants and immigration policy is motivated by racism. It isn't. Britain is one of the most overcrowded countries in Europe and there are plenty of unemployed British-born people of all races, especially in the current economic crisis. Unemployed British people should be given priority for training and jobs so as to reduce the burden of increased overpopulation and to prevent low-wage exploitation of an overabundant workforce. Do not sensationalise race relations issues. It harms black people and it could harm you. Is this an underhanded threat to the careers of journalists who don't go along with the anti-white racism of the document? And again, the statement assumes that only black people can be victims of racist news coverage. And last but not least, we have a racially and sexually exclusionist graphic in the upper right hand of the document. This photo excludes the 92% of Britain's population that happen to be white. The National Union of Journalists' Guidelines on Race Reporting is, in itself, a racist document. It would be very easy for people watching this video to blame ethnic minorities for this anti-white media bias, but as always, it's the money people who call the shots. So my question is, who at the National Union of Journalists decided to create a subcommittee that excludes white membership? And why did they give that committee exclusive authority over the organization's race reporting policies? Perhaps the truth of the matter is expressed in the document's extremely pro-immigration clauses. In late 2009, 
Former advisor to Tony Blair, Andrew Nether, revealed in his own blog that the real agenda behind New Labour's support of mass immigration was to socially engineer a multicultural Britain. Sadly, these anti-white policies affect people of all races. First of all, it directly affects white people in that they are demonised and are put at the back of the queue for jobs, funding and training, even though they had nothing to do with the slavery industries of generations gone before. And in the longer term, this affects minority races because white people who otherwise would have no inclination towards racism are being provoked into retaliation politics. This whole anti-white phenomenon is an engineered racial conflict, plain and simple. And who benefits? The proponents of Britain's surrender to the corrupt European Union certainly benefit because anti-white sentiment demonises 92% of Britain's population. Corporate fat cats wishing to profit from cheap imported labour also benefit, but the majority of British people lose out. So with this video, I'm asking British people of all races to rally together and fight back against the institutional racism at the National Union of Journalists. We should do this until the Black Members Council is dissolved and the guidelines on race reporting are rewritten from scratch by a new non-racist committee. The first step is to collectively educate the broader public about this racist media policy document. You personally can start by informing others about what you've learned in this video. The second step is to put the pressure on the National Union of Journalists. Feel free to write letters of complaint to them or contact your local newspaper journalists and editors and reason with them as to why they should be covering this topic. If you work in the media and are a member of the National Union of Journalists, then challenge the organisation from within. If necessary, withdraw your membership as a protest and cover the issue through whichever publication you happen to work for. And most of all, everybody needs to be confident in speaking out about this issue. A lot of people in Britain are still afraid of opposing false equality policies for fear of being labelled as racist, but that wall of fear is steadily crumbling. Once you familiarise yourself with the smear tactics of political correctness and false equality, then you can easily defeat them.